again. I am simultaneously recording a podcast and trying to do a YouTube video. All new for me, it's going to be so fun. I wanted to um, hit, kill two birds with one stone um, because I have a really exciting new offer to tell you about. And um, I think it's going to be really amazing. And it's called the technology of self-compassion. And the reason I'm calling it the technology of self-compassion is because I have recently distilled my coaching down into teaching others how to practice self-compassion because in the few years I've been coaching and the majority, and I've coached hundreds of clients and almost all challenges, at least from the people that I draw, come down to a, a, a lack of self-compassion or a broken relationship with themselves, an, an unhealed relationship with themselves. And I once, that's like the results my clients always get is a, a cultivation of self-compassion and it, it radically transforms your life in very subtle, but very foundational and very powerful ways. Because who are you with the most? Who are you with nonstop? You're with your own self all the time. And if you have, <laughs> here comes Elfie. If you have a, um, a relationship with yourself in which you are unkind to yourself and demanding and harsh and critical and unforgiving and, you know, replaying your failures constantly and constantly telling yourself how much you're going to fail in the future. And, and if, if that's the inner context of your relationship, you can imagine how that plays out in your life and how you relate to other people. And, and you, you just feel at war with yourself and you never get to rest. You never get to celebrate. You never get to play. You never get to forgive yourself. You never get to be at peace in your own body. And that, that plays out in so many other painful ways because we, we medicate to try to escape the inner turmoil that we experience or, or to, to soothe the anxiety that a lack of self-compassion creates. Because when you don't have compassion for yourself, you're invalidating your feelings and invalidation means your feelings don't ever get to be expressed and resolved. So it's, it's hard to forgive others. It's hard to reconcile. It's hard to take risks. Because when you don't practice self-compassion, if you do fail, then you're going to beat the shit out of yourself. And you're not, you're not going to get curious and, and understand and learn and grow and comfort yourself and allow yourself to feel the disappointment or the pain or the failure. You're going to, you know, suppress it and numb it and decide to never take that risk again because it's too scary. I mean, it's just... You can see why it's it it just weaves into every all of the work I do with my clients. It it is such powerful, transformative work, and it's not something that comes naturally to any of us. Nobody is by nature self compassionate. Often we, some of us are or have have maybe a gentler, maybe more, you know demeanor where we we feel we ex, we experience more compassion towards others or towards animals maybe depending on how we're made or how we were raised but nobody comes to the table with a a practice of self-compassion that they haven't learned that they haven't cultivated that they haven't set an intention around building this is why i call it the technology of compassion because it there are very specific tools and methods and, and ways of thinking and relating and responding that cultivate self-compassion. It's the hardest work I've ever had to do for myself. It is so much easier to default to judgment, to criticism, to throwing yourself under the bus, to expecting more of yourself than is even possibly reasonable. And it's hard, it's hard to turn to yourself with 
compassion, with grace, with kindness, with curiosity, with, um, I'm just checking to make sure my, my podcast is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It looks like we're good. It's really, it's really hard to do. It's simple, but it's not easy. And so I've realized that the, one of the most powerful things I'm here to do, because it is, it is work that took years for me to, to learn and cultivate, and it has changed my life so drastically in such a good way that I realized this is what I'm here to bring, <laughs> at least for right now in my business, in my, in my expression, in my art, in my, in the value I bring into the world. And the message that I spread is the power of self-compassion. It's something we just overlook. And a lot of the clients that I work with are in corporate America and they're high achievers. And the, the challenge and the, the, the false belief that so many of us have because of how we were brought up, the society we were brought up in, the culture we were brought up in, the challenges so many of us think that, and I hear this out of my clients' mouths, if I'm compassionate to myself, then I will never reach my full potential. I will never succeed. I will just, it's this fear that we're just going to let ourselves off the hook and not expect anything of ourselves or never take responsibility for anything or never hold ourselves accountable. It's like we, we think being self-compassionate or being compassionate is like, like, you know, removing any ounce of accountability or responsibility. Like compassion means just like letting ourselves or letting others off the hook and not expecting anything of people. And that's just not what self-compassion is. Compassion, and, and I, I've talked about this before, but but in like the the way I use self-compassion for myself and with my clients is curiosity, being with, telling the truth about what's really going on inside of you and bringing like slowing down and bringing some understanding to your behavior so that when you have that pattern, you keep repeating over and over and you keep trying to break it and you keep buying books and buying programs and, you know, setting it out with the best of intentions. And then you just, you can't stick with your new resolution or you can't break that habit that's creating so much pain, or you can't, you can't stop recreating the same painful patterns in your relationships, or you can't stop being attracted to the wrong person. Like when we, are in judgment about ourselves and we're we're not bringing self-compassion into those challenges we we don't find our way out when we bring in the technology of self-compassion one of one of the tools is curiosity let's look at this from a different perspective let's assume that you're not just broken you're not just out to sabotage yourself Let's assume that everything you do, there's a reason behind it. And self-compassion will help you like decipher why you're recreating the same patterns, why you're using this substance to comfort yourself, to numb, why you keep, you know, destroying your relationships, why you keep comparing yourself to other humans all the time and, and why you stay in the cycle of defeat. Compassion, we like put the brakes on and we, we bring awareness to what is really going on inside of you. Where in your upbringing, where in your, the formation of your identity, the formation of your self-concept, your world concept, your your belief of who you are in the world, where along the lines did, did, did that get twisted? And, and, you know, these strategies that came online early to help you survive. So like, for me, self-compassion, um, I, I, my default, my, my weakness, my pattern, my, um, where I judged myself for so many years and, ha and hated about myself so many years because I felt so helpless. 
I felt so helpless and I felt so disempowered. And like on the inside, I knew I was capable of so much more and I had so much more to say and I had so much more to do, but I couldn't break out of this helpless persona of someone who just, I just don't know. And like, oh, can you help me with this? And like, just really like never take the lead, always like defer to someone else's expertise and always make myself the smallest person in the room and, and just kind of always have some sort of crisis going on that I needed to be rescued from. And I kept trying to break that pattern by being a better human, (laughs) have better habits, spend your money better, stop asking people for help all the time. Like, and and I I developed this hyper independence because I was like, I am not going to be that helpless person anymore, but I couldn't break it. I just, it just popped up in other ways. And it, and I, I would try to succeed, try to like come out in, in my, my, my full power. And, and yet I would show up so disempowered and so confused and so unsure of myself. And when I finally stopped trying to fix myself and fix who I was so that I could finally be an acceptable human. And when I met myself with compassion, self-compassion, it was like, Hey, Rebecca, like, what is this helpless thing, this helpless pattern, this helpless personality you've developed? What is it? What is it serving for you? What is it doing for you? How is it helping you? Because I, I coach and, and work from the paradigm that everything we do has a positive intention. It's serving us in some way, even if the way it's serving us feels painful and uncomfortable, it's still, we're getting some benefit from it that we might not even realize what it is, but we're getting some benefit from it until we get curious, meet ourselves with compassion. We can't understand and figure out what that maladaptive behavior is doing for us. So we can never heal it. We can never transform it. So when I brought compassion into this tendency I have to go into helplessness, this tendency I have to need other people to be my authority, to need other people to take care of me. I was able to see like, oh, that was a learned behavior. Early on, I learned to survive in my family of origin. I learned to move through the world to secure for myself love, safety, belonging, a roof over my head, clothes on my back, food in my belly, my learned behavior was be helpless. I was the youngest of, I was the only girl. I was the youngest. I was the, you know, the one that everybody took care of. And it, when I would try to stand up and like do my own thing, you know, it was just, I was, I was made fun of and and I was all so cute. And so when you're in that dynamic and plus My mom's generation, you know, all the media I consumed, all of the messaging was like, be the helpless princess in the castle, and then the prince will come rescue you. And, you know, that's how you get your needs met. That was the culture I was brought up in. That was the generation I was brought up in. That fit well with my personality because I am on the, you know, more tender side, more you know, I, I, that just fit. So that survival strategy came online for me and it worked. It worked. It worked in jobs. It worked in relationship. I didn't ever like stand in my power or, or stand in my gifts or know what my desires were. And I was, my life was full of people pleasing and betraying my own self and abandoning my own self and not, and disembodying myself and all these painful things. But being helpless ensured my survival. And I didn't know better. I didn't understand that's why I was doing what I was doing because I I had yet to ever bring compassionate awareness to myself. And I, I I never gave myself the benefit of the doubt enough to get curious about why, 
why I keep creating the same pattern. I just judged myself and hated myself for it and, and believed I was just weak and incompetent and irresponsible and childish and da 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 all the things, right? Like that we go into judgment and then we spin off into more judgment and then we're just so defeated and then we never we never break through into who we're really able to be and who we really are. We never see ourselves for who we really are when we don't bring compassion into our awareness. And bringing self-compassion meant that now I know what to do. Now I know the patterns I need to break. Now I know where I need to shift my mindset. Now I need to know where now I know where I need to heal, where I need to shed these parts of me that I no longer need. Because once we bring awareness, like, oh, okay, I'm just, I, it's not that I don't still go into helpless patterns. My coach calls me out on that a lot. <laughs> Can smell it from a mile away. But, but now I know when I'm in the pattern, oh, that's not me. That's not who I am. I am not helpless. I just have a pattern of going into helplessness when I get afraid, when I get uncertain, when I get, you know, when the future's scary, I go into my default survival, like helpless mode. But now I'm, I'm building more and more and more awareness because I'm not judging myself for it. I'm not afraid of it in me anymore because I, I recognize it for what it is. So I can break this pattern. I can begin to not be helpless anymore. I, be, I can begin to be sovereign in my own life. I can begin to stand in my own power. I can begin to bring my gifts to the world in a powerful way and, and not be afraid of being powerful because prior, if I was powerful, it meant I wasn't going to survive because I had to be helpless for people to, for me to get the things I needed. If I was powerful and I, I wasn't helpless, how was I going to how was I going to get food on the table? So now I know like that, that was a false identity. It was a full, it was a survival strategy because I have compassion for that part of myself. Now, when I catch myself in the pattern, I don't have to spin out and, and try to fix myself and try to, to fix my life and try to struggle. Right. And then fight this part of myself that I just hate. Now I just know like, Oh, there's my scared, helpless little girl who just, just needs to be acknowledged and reminded that, oh, we're okay. I'm okay now. I don't need that strategy anymore. I can do this. I am empowered. I have the power to create the life that I want. I don't need other people to take care of me all the time. I get to need people from a place of interdependence, from a place of relationship, from a place of trust and opening up to love and opening up to connection and I don't need people to survive so I don't have to manipulate and I don't have to pretend to be weak when I'm not and I don't have to pretend to not know when I do so the technology of self-compassion the the tools of self-compassion of of awareness curiosity courage self-compassion takes courage because you have to be honest with yourself. You have to sit with your fear, your pain, your, the, the parts of you in the past that, that had to go into hiding so that you could feel safe in the world. Self-compassion means you, you have to kind of collect <laughs> all those parts of you back together and bring them back all into the same room and invite everybody to like have a powwow and get to know each other and, you know, start to cooperate. So self-compassion isn't, it's not easy. It's not for the, the soft, the softies. Self-compassion is one of the most powerful, courageous, brave things you can learn to do. Because when you're, compa- when you're compassionate, you're telling the truth. Once you tell the truth and you see the truth, you don't get to hide behind your false identities anymore. I mean, you can, but it, it's hard to once you know once the light has come on and once the truth is there, it's hard to, the snoring Alfie, I figure it, I feel like I should call this podcast the snoring Alfie. Oh, so funny. 
Um, but oh, now my foot's asleep. This is, <laughs> I shouldn't do this live on video. If I was not filming myself, you couldn't have even seen that. So the, the technology of self-compassion, it, it, there are very, there are tools that you master, that you learn, that you apply, that, that teach you how to become someone who practices self-compassion. And when you do that, when you can live with yourself in a compassionate way, you don't lay on the couch and watch reality TV all day long. That's what people are so afraid they're going to do. You, you do sometimes when you really you want to give yourself a break. But self-compassion does not take the energy out of your motor. It just, it enables you to achieve what you truly desire, what's truly aligns with your values, what you're truly, truly capable of, but from a place of love and power and abundance and joy and freedom. And, and you're, you're reaching your full potential because you get to, because you believe in who you are and you believe, you know that you're worthy and you're loved and you're capable. And all of these parts of yourself that you've been trying to fix don't need to be fixed. They just need to be loved and met with compassion. And, and the more you love those parts of you that you've been trying to like clean up and fix and get rid of, it's like every time you bring that part back into you with love and with open arms and with compassion, you become more complete. So instead of having all these disintegrated parts because you have all these, you know, at least I did, I had all these parts I had to hide all the time. So much energy went towards pretending that part wasn't there or trying to like, like dissociate from that part or trying to like make sure nobody ever saw that part. And that, that took a lot of my energy. So the more you, you free yourself through compassion to be able to integrate everything back into yourself, because everything is welcome because everything's met with compassion when we meet ourselves with compassion, we heal, we heal, we no longer live in shame. And, and all of, it's like all of those parts come back together. And every time a part integrates, you're infused with more of who you are, with more energy, with more wholeness, your power, it's like your power, like starts to come back in instead of just being spread out with, because there's so many parts of yourself that you're judging and that you, you dislike. The other thing is, is you can, I mean, you're still going, if you're a high achiever, if you're someone who one of your values is reaching goals and accomplishing great things and getting the promotion and making the money or like, you know, doing amazing things in the world, all, all that happens when you, when you bring in self-compassion is you get to do those things, but you get to do them with some joy and some peace along the way. When we're achieving from a place of drivenness and when just pure drivenness because we feel like we have to achieve in order to be okay with ourselves, like we're driven, like maybe once I finally achieve, then I'll stop being such an asshole to myself. Then I'll finally have my own approval. Then I'll finally have my parents' approval. And I'll finally have my wife or my husband's approval. Like when we when we are achieving from that place, we may, st we're still probably going to achieve the things, but we're going to be miserable as fuck along the way and probably numbing ourselves with lots of behavior and probably overworking and missing out on things in life. Like where we get to play, we get to just be present. We just get to be on vacation and not be checking our email. So you can achieve things from a place of criticism, judgment, being really hard on yourself, being really unkind to yourself, not taking care of yourself along the way, or you can achieve really what's really important to you and you get to enjoy the journey and take care of yourself along the way and be healthy and be healed, not to mention the energy you bring into the world the more self-compassion you cultivate, the more compassion flows out of you towards others. 
And this is a technology. This is not something you're born with or not born with. It's not something there's, it's not that there's either self-compassionate people and not compassionate people, right? People who have self-compassion have learned it. You can learn it. I can teach it to you. It is, it is not something that came naturally to me. I was so hard on myself. I was always, always at fault, always to be blamed, always something horribly wrong with me. I was so not compassionate. I didn't allow myself to have any of my feelings or my emotions. It was always someone else's were more valid. Mine clearly, you know, it was just, I share that with you to, to let you know that it's, it can be learned. It is the work I've been doing for the last few years. It is the work that is actually finally liberating me. Liberating me to, to finally let go of these unhealthy habits to finally face like, what am I running from? That makes me want to eat or drink or watch TV. Like what, what is driving that behavior? Why do I show up disempowered when inside I know I'm not disempowered? And self-compassion is allowing me to crack the code and actually transform my life. So it's powerful stuff. It's not just so you can like be nicer. That is a very big bonus to self-compassion. The more kindness we bring into the world, the better the whole world's going to be. But it's so much more than that. And it, it will change everything for you. So if you're struggling, oh, you know, and, and you just can't seem to figure it out, and you can't seem to heal your relationships, or you can't seem to let go of your past, and you can't seem to like break these habits, and, and you keep abusing your body by not taking care of it, by overworking it, not letting it rest, not putting the things in it, not moving it. Like if 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 you're stuck in any of these painful patterns. If you can't control your temper, if you can't ever stop crying, like all the things, self-compassion is a fundamental tool to help you, to heal you, to help you become powerful. I mean, not become, you already are, <laughs> but to help you align with, to step into, to believe in your own power, your own capability, your own gifts, your own talent, your own strength. We all come to the table fully equipped. We all have an equal power available to us inside of us. Equal amounts of strength and gifts and power and creativity. And we are limitless potential all the time. And compassion will, self-compassion will help you, help you step into that. It will help you learn it, learn how to use it, learn how to be in it, learn how to access it. And it's a practice. It's not some like, woo, now I'm self-compassionate. Now I'm all of a sudden this great person. It is a daily practice. And it's not something anyone completely masters perfectly, but we can master it in the sense that we're aware of it most of the time and we, we are able to choose it most of the time. And we, maybe we choose it 60% of the time. I call that mastery <laughs> because just 60% of the time will completely transform your life. So I have condensed this into a three month program. Part of learning self-compassion is, is meeting, being met with compassion, which is my superpower. It is something I, I just can do. I can't explain it. I've, I have received so much compassion in my life. I'm able to embody compassion. And now that I've, I've cultivated self-compassion, it's like I can embody compassion on a whole new level. I know how to meet myself, my darkest, the darkest, most hurting parts of myself, the most ashamed parts of myself. I'm meeting those with compassion, which enables me to see the world in such a different way. 
and to see you in such a powerfully truthful way because there's literally nothing you could show me there's nothing you could say to me that can't be met with compassion and understanding and the more you understand yourself the more compassion you're going to feel for yourself and you're going to know what needs to be done to to let go of the pain and the the things that are holding you back it's not hard to learn it's just hard to receive that's the hard part is does it get to be this good does compassion really get to be the thing that transforms me instead of being told how awful I am and how much I need to change and how much I need to like just be lucky I'm here alive taking up space so the technology of self-compassion three-month program I will teach it to you I will teach you everything I learned so that you can begin to master this for yourself and that you you can go out and spread yourself your power your goodness into the world there is a link in my bio to apply for this program. I'm taking limited people through it right now just because I don't have a lot of capacity for a lot of clients. So it's short. It's a shorter program than I've, than I've done in a really long time. Um, and it's one-to-one -one right now. And there's, yeah, there's a link to apply in my, in my bio or you can email me. You can reach out to me on social if you have any questions. Um, I will link below um, here in the video to how you can reach me. This is important work to do. And it doesn't have to take you years and years like it took me. I can teach you the technologies <laughs> so that you can upgrade your own system and begin to function in your full capacity. All right. I love you very much. And I would love to hear from you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and go out and be compassionate.